Hello, everyone. This is Scott Reichel, and this is the Betting Bay Area Podcast and Believe Podcast. So now we're the Bay Area's number one sports podcast. Now we're the only place to show up for a team in the Bay Area and more. We believe in our teams. Do you believe? If you enjoy the show, please subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. We're also available in Triple Directory, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Luminary, and TuneIn. You can find us at Believe.com and at Believe Podcast on Twitter. And you can find me personally at Reichel Radio on Twitter. On this week's show, we talk about the Golden State Warriors and some of their games coming up over the next couple of days from a betting perspective. Before we do all that, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor. With the NBA in full swing and as college basketball starts to heat up around March Madness, make sure you find your way to bet on all the action here at Bet Online. They also have a special deal coming for March Madness as they have a $100,000 bracket madness contest as Bet Online is the spot to be for all your bracketology needs. Bet Online has you covered with all the news, scores, and odds, the best place to place your wagers, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website betonline.ag or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on just your first deposit. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ben Barry Podcast here on the Believe Podcast Network. Now, before we end up going on break, we previewed what we were going to be doing for this week's show. It's going to be covering the Golden State Warriors once again as the second half of the regular season starts tonight, or starts with the Warriors tonight. Technically started yesterday with a couple of games, but most of the teams are in action, including Golden State. So we're going to dive in and talk about the matchup coming up tonight against the Los Angeles Clippers before going through the other three games that wrap around to Next one, uh, Thursday, and then we'll do the same thing again next week. But looking at the matchup here with the Clippers, looking at the betting lines, the Clippers are a pretty decent favorite in this spot. Clippers are currently laying about 6.5, and, and the over or under is around 229.5. Has been a little bit of under money, 231 dropping down to around 230, 229.5 in most spots. Either way, looking at the lineups for both teams, the Clippers should be at full strength after seeing Kawhi Leonard and seeing Paul George sit out for most of the, I want to say most of the regular season, but for the last couple of weeks, it seems like they've been alternating on who's going to be playing and who's not going to be playing. And yet, Paul George has been uh, one of those guys who has been kind of, I'd say, AWOL on occasion. But either way, both him and Kawhi Leonard should be back in the starting lineup for tonight's game, which is why you see the Clippers being a pretty decent favorite. Golden State also at relatively full strength. Oubre is expected to be back in the lineup after he kind of was dealing with an injury for the last couple of games in the first half of the season. You have Curry and Draymond back in the lineup after they were both uh, healthy scratches or I'd say injured, I guess, against Phoenix, but realistically Golden State announced that they were going to be benching them just for rest purposes. Either way, Golden State should be at full strength. However, there is some questions regarding the status of James Wiseman for this matchup, who apparently... Missed the COVID test during the All-Star break, so he might not be available to play in this game. But there may be seen. It seems like he might be able to go, but they definitely monitor his status in this one. But looking at this matchup here, I understand that the Clippers are a pretty decent favorite here because of the talent on paper. Having said that, I think it's too many points. So I like Golden State here, plus the... If you can still find seven, yeah, there's still some sevens around. I would take the seven here. A couple reasons why. First of all... The Clippers are just one of those teams that has been pretty underwhelming this season. I know record-wise, this team is pretty good. But if you've watched them over the last couple of weeks, this team really struggles against pretty good teams. And this team also is really awful in the last couple of minutes in the fourth quarter. Clutch time stats are one of the worst teams in the entire league. And I simply think that in a game that should be pretty close, I don't really have much faith in the Clippers closing games out. And the Clippers will win this game. But I do think it will be within five points or so. So for that reason... I like Golden State plus the points. And looking at the total in this matchup here, I like the under. I agree with this line move. Clippers, don't get me wrong, are a solid offensive team. But Golden State's been a very good defensive team, especially since Draymond came back. And I simply think that the Clippers will partake in a little bit of a slower style of play. I think the Clippers know that they have to stop Curry from doing whatever he wants offensively, and I do think that Golden State will be forced to play a little bit more in the half court than what you're expecting to see in this matchup. Plus, after such a decent layoff, you have to wonder if both teams will be struggling a little bit offensively to find their groove. I know you had a couple of all-stars with Curry, with Kwai, and with Paul George. The rest of the roster, though, hasn't really done much over the last week because of the inactivity, so you do have to wonder if both teams will come out shooting bricks in the first quarter of this game. So for that reason, I will lean to the under as well, and I like Golden State plus the points. But looking at some of the other matchups coming up for this week for the Golden State Warriors, you have the game on Sunday 
Uh, surprisingly, Golden State, after playing on Thursday, has Friday and Saturday off, which is a little bit unexpected. But either way, ends up playing Utah at home. Now, Utah, of course, has been one of the best teams in the entire league based on record. However, Utah seemed to struggle a little bit over its last couple of games before the All-Star break. And at the end of the day, I still like Utah in this spot. I simply think that Utah is the more talented team. I know Gobert has had serious issues in the pick and roll against Golden State because of the fact that he simply can't guard Curry on the perimeter. But if you looked at how these teams have played so far this season, Utah ended up smacking Golden State by 19 in Utah. I simply think that the Jazz are the much better team. I think Golden State is still, uh, I'd say, limited offensively. Besides Draymond's unselfishness and his solid passing and Curry's shooting, Oubre has been better. Do I still like him and Wiggins as a 2-3 and three option offensively? No. And Utah has been such a good three-point shooting team this season with Bogdanovich, with Mitchell, with Ingles, with Clarkson. They just have so many weapons. And at the end of the day, I do think that Golden State will be a little bit overwhelmed by all of the depth that Utah has. So for that reason, I personally like the Jazz in that spot. Looking at some stats, though, for Utah, just to talk about how dominant they've actually been. You look through... The team stats, they're averaging 116.6 points per game, which ranks third in the league. They're also ranking second in the league in rebounding with uh, 48 rebounds per game. Also fourth in defense, as they're only allowing 107.8 points per game. So this team, from top to bottom, offensively and defensively, has been absolutely dialed in from start to finish. And I simply think after dropping 120-plus against Golden State in the first meeting this season, I think you'll see a pretty similar outcome there. To go through the actual lineups here, uh, Utah has six players averaging at least 11 points per game. That scoring depth is absolutely crazy. Clarkson's the favorite to win defense uh, to win sixth man of the year. Gobert's currently the favorite to win defensive player of the year with his 2.7 blocks per game. Would I vote for him to win defensive player of the year? No. If I had to vote, I'd give it to Ben Simmons. But still, Gobert has looked like a really, really dominant big man defensively and on the boards. He's averaging 13.1 rebounds per game. But... We're going down the line. I also forgot to mention Mike Conley, who was a late addition to the All-Star team. But Conley's had a very good year, averaging 16.1 points per game. Mitchell's averaging 24.7. Clarkson's averaging 17.9. Boyan's averaging 15.7. This team really can just destroy you in so many ways. It mostly involves three-point shooting. But just anybody can have a big game at any given time. And I think Golden State will be a little bit overwhelmed by Utah's depth. So for that reason, I like Utah to get the job done. They'll probably close the small favorites in Golden State. Probably around three and a half, maybe a little bit more. But either way, I think Utah win that game pretty handily. Anyway, looking at the rest of Golden State's schedule for the rest of the week. uh, After that, they have a back-to-back game as they end up taking on the Lakers in the Staples Center on Monday. Now, these teams played before the All-Star break without without AD in the lineup, and the Lakers absolutely killed this team. AD will most likely be out for this game as well. Once again, it kind of depends on how quickly he's going to recover, but it seems like he's going to be out for at least the next two weeks. So we will see. Either way, I like the Lakers in the spot. This is going to be another home game, so it is a back-to-back, but there is no travel involved for the Warriors. I saw this matchup play out a couple weeks ago, and Los Angeles defensively is simply too much for Golden State to handle. I know that Golden State has the ability to outscore the Lakers. We saw them have that massive comeback in early in the season where they were down double digits and ended up rallying to win the game with AD in the lineup. But the Lakers defensively are just so dominant, and I simply think that Golden State has A, no matchup for LeBron. B, I think Schroeder is actually going to give this team problems as he did in the last meeting. Just to go through the actual results of that meeting with the Lakers, uh, they ended up uh, losing that game. Sorry, just trying to find it. 117-91. to So, really struggled on both sides of the ball. You look at the actual matchups here, LeBron didn't even go off. LeBron only had about 18 points in this game, or 19 points. So, he really didn't do much. But going through the line here, uh, yeah, the Lakers just put the clamps down defensively and dominated on the boards. Anytime you win a rebounding battle 60-35, to you're most likely going to win a game. Golden State has had rebounding issues all season long. And the Lakers absolutely killed them on the boards, and I simply think that'll be the same case in this one. So I do like Golden State. I know Curry had a very quiet game as the Lakers were up about 29 at the half. So Curry only played 26 minutes, only at 16 points. But at the end of the day, the Lakers are just so much bigger, and I do think that Golden State will struggle on the boards in this matchup as well. So I do like the Lakers to get the job done. But looking at some some stats for the Lakers this season, the defense has been the main story. Of course, it has been a little bit worse 
since AD went out because he's such an elite rim protector. But looking at the actual stats, LeBron is having an MVP quality season, averaging 25.8 points per game, 8 rebounds per game, and, and 7.8 assists per game. However, we can all agree the Lakers, ever since AD got injured, has have kind of fallen apart, which is why LeBron is no longer favored in the MVP voting. You currently have Embiid being listed as the favorite, with LeBron mostly being in second place. But going through the rest of the lineup, of course, AD uh, averaging 22.5 points per game, 8.4 rebounds per game, and 1.8 blocks. However, of course, he's still injured, so it's not going to play much of a factor in this one. But you have Schroeder, who's averaging 14.9 points per game, 4.5 assists. Very, very solid player, plus very solid on-ball defender. He'll most likely have to match up against Curry, him, or Caruso, potentially depending on some rotations. But either way, he will have to shut down Curry, as he kind of did in the last meeting, even though... Uh, Curry got pulled pretty early because that game turned into an absolute blowout. But either way, I like the Lakers. This this, this defense is just so good. And the big men, I think, are a little bit too much for Golden State to handle. So I do think the Lakers will get the job done and win that game pretty handily. So I do think Golden State's going to struggle in those two games. But hopefully they'll be able to bounce back for the game after. As they have a day off in between. And after that, they end up taking on the Houston Rockets uh, on the road and that will be taking place on Wednesday. Now, Houston has been the worst team in the league for the last couple of weeks. This team is in the middle of a massive losing streak, and it all corresponds to the injury to their best player in Christian Wood. Once he got injured, everything hit the fan, and Houston has lost each of its last 13 games. This team is absolutely terrible, and there's a reason why Houston went from basically being in first place in the division to being dead last when you lose 13 in a row. It's pretty tough for you to keep it together, but I like Golden State in this game. I'm not really going to spend much time on it. I know Christian Wood was questionable for the game uh, yeah, tonight against Sacramento, so there is a chance he will probably be able to play on Wednesday against Golden State, but at the end of the day, this team just isn't very good. I know that Wall and Oladipo can put up some decent numbers, but they're actively shopping Oladipo, so I don't exactly think that Oladipo is exactly thrilled to be there. I think everyone expected Houston to try to trade him. They offered him a contract extension. Oladipo said no, which was expected. But still, Houston might be shipping him uh, within the next week or so, so there is a chance Oladipo might not even be there. So keep that in mind. But you want to look at these numbers here. Golden State's just the better team. Uh, Houston is 11-23. and 23. Golden State currently is a playoff team, so we already know that. But looking at this matchup, uh, this is also going to be the second night of back-to-back -back for Houston. So I do think fatigue will play a factor. But you look through the the matchups here, Golden State is the better scoring team, the better defensive team. Uh, Houston had a solid defensive run earlier in the year, but it's given up 133 points in two of its last three games. The defense completely fell apart without Wood as a rim protector. And Golden State, simply put, is just the much better team. So overall, I think Golden State should be able to bounce back from those two losses to Utah and Los Angeles and put together a nice performance against Houston. So once again, though, we're going to do a quick recap of my thoughts for uh, the game here before going into some stats once again for Golden State. So looking at the game tonight against the Clippers, I like the Warriors plus the 7, and I also like the under 229.5 in that matchup. I like the Utah Jazz to get the job done on Sunday in the next game. After that, I like the Lakers to get the job done on Monday. And then Wednesday... I like the Warriors to get back on track against Houston on the road. And then we'll go. We'll cover the back-to-back -back games against Memphis on Friday and Saturday in the next uh, in, uh, installment of the podcast. But before we end up wrapping up, quick look through the stats. Curry, of course, is the best player on the team, best point guard in the league, averaging 29.7 points per game, 6.3 assists, 5.5 rebounds. He has been an absolute star. I'd say a dark horse candidate to win the MVP, but realistically, based on the Golden State's record, he really has no shot to win the MVP. But in any other year, he would probably be one of the favorites with his current stat line. Wiggins is in second in scoring with 17 points per game, 4.5 rebounds per game. He's been solid. Oubre averaging 15.5 points per game, 5.9 rebounds. He was a little bit banged up in the week leading up to the All-Star break. So we'll see how he does after a little bit of a layoff. You have Wiseman. He's had a pretty solid rookie year, 11.8 points per game, 5.9 rebounds per game. He's kind of alternated between starting and being on the bench, but either way, he has looked pretty promising for a rookie big man, and hopefully he'll continue to develop as the season goes on. But other than that, though, really not much else to talk about. So that's the installment of the, of the Betting Barrier podcast here on Thursday, March 11th. Good luck to all of you and your respect the best today. Bye, everyone.